a sorcerer, a wizard, a king, a dragon. The ultimate fight between life and death. The ultimate sin that wizards has caused a thousand years ago. And now we must pay for what they did in the past. Hello fellow book questers, it is I, Aaron the Book Quester. Today I have this awesome epic finale of the Earth Sea Cycle. The other wind by Ursula K. Le Guin. And well, let's get right on to it. So this book, as I have already said, is book six, the final book in the entire Earth Sea Cycle. When I first started the series, I remember feeling super excited and ready for a new Wizards Tree series. I was kind of expecting a mixture between like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter, but it really exceeded my expectations, showing things that I never would have expected from a book like this. So, like, well, as I have just said, let's get right on to it. So, this it st all starts with a man, a sorcerer. His name is Oliver. And he's having terrible, terrible dreams. In his dreams, the dead calls for him. And his wife, who had died young, says that she wants to break through and will live with him. And it's creepy. And her love, her love is so strong that she kisses Alder over the low stone wall that separates the living and the dead. Of course, if I had a dream like that, I'd be like, I'll freak out, but Alder, who was pretty much a little smarter than me, he went to find, he went to look where the wise wizards and the nine masters could pro possibly aid him. And those nine masters reveals a secret to him, that the great archmage, Lord Sparrowhawk, also known as Jed, is still alive. He's living at his hometown Gaunt, living humbly in a cottage. And so he goes. So he goes to find Jed, the once Archmage, and there the Archmage shears out Alder's terrifying story of him being pulled and asked for the dead to, to free them. And well, that's dangerous. If the border between life and death breaks apart, that would result in absolute chaos in which, well, the world could end. You know, typical. And the Jed knows that she needs advice from people who actually knew some stuff. So he is sent to find Tenar, the white lady, Tenar of the Ring, and her, well, her adopted daughter, Tehanhu, the, chi uh, the child of the eldest one, Kalasine. She is a dragon child, and, well, she has some power on her. And, of course, in the Hall of Havnor, where the sword of Erith Akbe shines in the sun, where all of Earthsea is governed, the king, Lebanon, the young king who, ha who Archmage, has managed to seek in book three, I believe. And and so Alder journeys and he he meets legends that he thought he would never meet. He was a simple sorcerer. A sorcerer who could mend broken things, but could do pretty much nothing else. It was just mending and helping people, just mending broken pots and things like that. It's it's not very major, but he's meeting these wizards and kings and dragons, and he's, he's kind of freaking out. And he goes to Havnor, where he meets King Lebanon. King Lebanon is, meanwhile, having a situation there. You see, the the new king, a new warlord, I would say, of the Kargish lands, has sent his daughter to marry Lebanon, which is not very thrilling because Lebanon really didn't want to marry at that point in time. So while that's going on, Alder goes on and tells him his story, and well, it's becoming a big problem. So at the halls of Havnor, they finally meet. A wizard from Rook, a wizard from Palnor who believes in the old powers of the earth, 
the Kargish princess, whom at first Lebanon despises, but soon enough wins his respect, and the great she-dragon Arion, who is introduced in book 5, and, like, it's like wrapping up all these characters from the six books of Earthsea has gathered to make their last stand, and it's just really thrilling, and it's really interesting to read how they react when they meet each other. And they meet, and they discuss what they have to do. Finally, they decide that the best thing to do is to face the threat at the Eminent Grove, the most holiest place in the entire world, where they will face the darkness. And then Tenar and the Kargish Princess comes in handy. Because in, in like propaganda and kind of just believes, the Kargs thought that those sorcerers, when they took the magic, they, they, well, they crossed a rule that should not be broken, and they, when they died, could not be reborn, and they would just stay as like a spirit, not doing anything. And then they put their myths and histories together. And thousand years ago, when dragons and dragon and men were once, the dragon and men split into two parts. Dragons wild and moving. Men, well, they were supposed to keep away from the language of the making, and the dragons would stay with the language, which we call magic. And the sorcerers obviously didn't do that. And when they did that, dire consequences followed. That was the rule. That was what, what the world was supposed to be. But the sorcerers wanted too much. And they and the modern sorcerers and the king finally uncovers the terrible secret. That the sorcerers had managed to make himself make themselves immortal. And so they went to the edge of the known world, went over that edge, and found a beautiful land where they made a wall so that no living being could cross it. But the laws, it was a terrible idea because the other wind, that is the wind that brings life, brings life, brings water, brings plants, brings life. But when that wall was built, the other wind stopped blowing and the trees died and the beautiful river stopped flowing and the people, the spirits who thought they had conquered death, they, they couldn't remember anything. When wife and husband passed each other, they didn't do anything. Nothing. They couldn't feel anything. And they had chosen Alder. They had chosen the lowly sorcerer to break them free of that terrible curse. To be mortal, but yet could just staying there for all eternity. And so, the great dragon and the king, they go over to that barrier, and they rip the barrier, stone brick by brick, stone by stone. And finally, the dead become free. And they go into the actual natural cycle, which they were supposed to. They die, and they are reborn as a new being. And so the book draws to an end with uh, a little bit of unsatisfaction, in my opinion, because I kind of wished at least the old Archmage to have a little bit of a power show in this book, but I guess I can't have anything. And what I really liked was that what we thought for the first five books was the Land of the Dead was actually a cursed land that sorcerers had managed to do bad things to. And what's also funny is that the Kargs were actually right, because the Kargs always said that sorcerers were cursed because they would never be reborn again according to the cycles of nature. And, well, it's true, but at that time, we obviously hear this and it's like, ridiculous propaganda. Sorcerers are great, they're nice people, and yeah, they are. But obviously they did something wrong at that time. So I think it was really interesting, it wraps up all this all these little loose bits and pieces that we have left over the, over as we continued the Earthsea cycle, and I feel like it was a good rapid ultimate battle, 
and it was just an incredibly good plot. I did not see that twist coming. And a great book, a must read, an absolutely awesome page turner. And like always, your book quester, Aaron the Book Quester. Absolutely awesome book. I mean, if you don't read this, you're missing out.